surprised that Ant-Man was actually an awesome movie to watch, considering it is Ant-Man of all people. Because, truth be told, the character of Ant-Man is the worst superhero of all time. Come on, talks to Ant, shrinks down and stuff. Giant Man, on the other hand, is amazing because he's a giant man. But other than that, Ant-Man was kind of a joke. He was like basically Marvel's version of Aquaman. Yeah, because Aquaman's DC. I was having, I was trying to have it, I was having a brain fart there for a second. But yeah, Ant Man, Ant Man was basically the equivalent of Aquaman. But now that they're reimagining everything, now they actually made Ant Man look amazingly awesome. And Yellow Jacket, man, the alter ego of Ant Man when he actually, well, he doesn't accidentally, he purposely kills himself off to make it look like he died. But then he comes back as. Yellow Jacket, but in this movie, Yellow Jacket and Ant-Man are two separate people, and also Michael Douglas is in it in the original Ant-Man, we got Paul Rudd in it, I'm talking too damn much, if it, that makes goddamn sense, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, oh yeah, and Gary Morris was in a scene for 20 seconds, which really surprised me, because where the fuck has Gary Morris been, wow, anyways, let's start this shit, Honest Trailers, by Ant-Man, by Honest Trailers, Oh, I get it. From Edgar Wright, until he refused to get in line, comes a movie <laughs> based on a superhero so ridiculous, yep. you'll swear Marvel's choosing their projects on a dare. Ant-Man. You've seen Marvel movies based on green giants, Norse gods, and these weirdos. <laughs> now, get ready for a hero so silly, no one can even keep a straight face when they say his dumb name. <laughs> Ant-Man, Ant-Man. <laughs> exactly. Is it going to change the name? In this super-powered heist film that, against all odds, actually kind of works. I mean, it's still more believable than letting someone join the Avengers just because they're good with a bow and arrow. <laughs> oh, shot fire! Play. Say yes, Scott. Wait, nope, not that one. Yeah, that's the guy. A master thief who gets busted every time he tries to get away with anything. He hey, sucks at thieving. <laughs> His life will change when he meets Hank Pym, the billionaire industrialist who lost control of his company to a bald former ally who betrays him and plots to use his advanced suit technology for evil. Sounds familiar. That sounds familiar. It's because it's the exact same premise as the first Iron Man movie. Uh -huh. If it ain't broke. I mean, seriously. It even has that friend staring at the suit they'll wear in the sequel moment. Next time, baby. It's about damn time. Thrill at amazing visual effects that makes 70-year-old Michael Douglas look like 60-year-old Michael Douglas <laughs> and has harmless locations pulsed with epic danger like a briefcase, a toy train set, hey, they made it Michael work. Pena's jug, in some of the most high-stakes fights between tiny people since Frodo versus Gollum. Uh -huh. Marvel still hasn't run out of ways for guys to punch each other in the face. Or in this movie's case, Sucker Punch. And now it's gonna blow up in your face. Are you okay, <laughs> There's a lot of sucker punching in this movie. That's how you punch. Prepare for a movie that would be really stale without Paul Rudd doing Paul Rudd things. Yep. Because most of it is Hank Pym yammering on about some boring science crap. I use electromagnetic waves to stimulate the olfactory nerve center. I must retrieve this prototype of a signal decoy. I created a formula that altered atomic relative distance. Huh? She turned off a regulator. He went seven times. Only Michael Douglas can make this work. From the other 11 MCU movies with a few unique twists, like making another schlubby comedian get abs for a superhero yep. role, actually getting you to care about disgusting insect monsters. No, I didn't care about Anthony. Oh, no, not Anthony. I did not care one bit about Anthony. I like that one because he had a name. And saying the one thing everyone's been yelling at the screen since phase two started. I think our first move should be calling the Avengers. Yeah. So strap in for the best micro movie since Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Oh, I love that movie. Cruise, once again, they can literally sell you anything, and they don't even have to try that hard to sell it. Marvel, man, they got us by the balls. Ants. Ants. Man, man. Huh? <laughs> Story. I love you, Matt. <laughs> Tony Stark, Senior. Yeah. Wasp Machine. 
the only Latino in the MCU. Wait, what? I, as himself, as the biggest Avenger they could get, Thomas and the Magic Railroad, and disposable Marvel villain number nine, Tiny Iron Man. <laughs> exactly. Man, after this one, I cannot imagine these movies getting any straight. <laughs> forgot about that. Benedict the Cumberbatch is time. Oh yeah. Trailers. Are you ready for some Benedict Cumberbatch? Jar Jar. Hello from the other side. Jingle balls and deck the halls. Black nerd. Gum will Amazing guy. Smile. Triple dead gum it lasts for a while. I thought she was with you. Oh man, Marvel man. What can you say? They basically have us by the fucking balls because they can spew out anything and we'll still watch it. Like, let's be honest here. Let's be honest here. Guardians of the Galaxy, none of us knew about that. Only a certain amount of nerds out there knew about that because, like, Guardians of the Galaxy was like this obscure comic book way, way, way out there. Nobody knew about it. And then some of us found out about it when we watched Avengers, the TV show, the cartoon one. Yeah, the cartoon, I forgot, you know the one where the uh, guys showed up, Guardians of the Galaxy and Avengers were teamed up. Basically, Guardians of the Galaxy are space Avengers, and then you hear they're making a movie, and you're thinking, like, how the fuck do you make a fucking tree and a rec talking raccoon work on screen? On paper, this seems ridiculous and fucking stupid, but they made it work, because it's Marvel, man, because they got us by the balls. And again, with Ant-Man, come on, like I said... Let's be real about this. Ant-Man is a goddamn joke in the comic book industry. Just like Aquaman. Because he is in the comics. It's like, it's, he's just Ant-Man. But they made it work. And for some reason, they got Paul Rudd. But Paul Rudd made it work. Because you're thinking, like, what the fuck? Chris Pratt and Paul Rudd are not the type of guys that you think of. Like, main superheroes? What? 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 They be like, the, uh... They'd be like the uh, comic relief, but Michael Payne is the comic relief. Well, he's the funniest guy in there that made it work. Especially him trying to describe shit like, hey, check it out, blah, 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 like stuff like that. But yeah, Michael Payne is the only Latino in the MCU. God damn, he's right. <laughs> shit, I, can I can't figure anyone else. Anyways, that's it for now, Human Nation. Take it easy. Bye.